What is up everyone, kind of also known as Wiltshot here, and welcome back to another video. In my previous video, I modified a Dell Optiplex 3040, as you can see it sitting next to me on the table. So if you haven't seen that video, I do recommend to watch that video before watching this video. So if you want to watch my previous video on modifying this computer here, click on the link in the description below, as well as the eye that is in the upper right hand corner of this video. So with that said, in my previous video, I did ask the question, if you guys wanted to see the benchmarks of this computer. And a lot of you actually surprisingly said yes. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. So let's get into the benchmarking of this Dell Optiplex 3040. Okay, so this is gonna be round two of my benchmarks. And the reason why it's round two is I just finished doing all the benchmarks except for Cinebench R15, which I now have open on my desktop. And I noticed on the right hand, or the left hand side, excuse me, where it says your system, it said it was reporting four cores and four threads for the 6700, which is incorrect. The 6700 is supposed to have four cores, eight threads. And what that means is for whatever reason, the motherboard inside the 3040 had disabled hyper-threading. So I was pretty much using a GIMP processor the entire time I had it in here which is really annoying because I think the reason why the motherboard disabled hyper-threading was because I have the i5-6500 in there. And obviously the i5-6500 does not have a hyper-threading in this generation. So I think it switched it off. And when I put the i7 in there, it didn't turn it back on. So I had to manually go into the BIOS and turn it back on. So all of my benchmark scores that I just did are now invalid because I didn't have hyper-threading on. So what I've also done on the uh, 3040 as well is I've used a program called Inspector. And what Inspector does is it disables the Meltdown Inspector patches that were released, which gimps the processor a little bit in terms of hyper-threading performance. So I've uh, disabled all those patches, so I should get the utmost performance I can get out of the 6700. So those patches aren't holding back the processor anymore because uh, believe it or not, Skylake was most affected by Meltdown Inspector patches. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run the multi-core score benchmark on Cinebench R15. And the 6700 has a weird boost frequency. Uh, so it goes four gigahertz on one core, 3.9 gigahertz on two cores, 3.8 gigahertz on three cores, and 3.7 gigahertz on all four cores. So right now we're boosting to 3.68, which is pretty much 3.7 gigahertz. And I expect that frequency to drop a little bit as the CPU gets a little bit warmer. Uh, obviously the motherboard is controlling everything. I can't change the frequency or multiplier for the CPU, which is unfortunate. I would love to have, have BCLK multiplier on this motherboard, but uh, it's just that set at 100. That's all I got, so I can't really change anything. So the frequency is dropping to 3.65 gigahertz as the uh, benchmark is running. So we did maintain almost the, the core frequency there. And that netted us a score of 803. So that's actually really good for a multi-core score. I'm actually very happy with that. Um, that put us just behind the 4770K on Cinebench here, which is running at 4.4 gigahertz. Obviously ours maxes out at four gigahertz or 3.7 if we're boosting on all four cores. So that is actually fairly good. I'm actually very happy with that result. So next we're going to run the single core benchmark on Cinebench R15, and that's going to take a considerable amount of time. And hopefully we manage to maintain that four gigahertz boost frequency on the 6700. So we'll find out. I'm going to click run on the single core score, and then I'm gonna come back to you guys because it's gonna take a freaking long time to run this benchmark with one core. So let's go ahead and run it. And then I'll come back to you guys as soon as the benchmark for R15 is done. Because again, it's going to take a long time. Okay, so Cinebench R15 has finished with the single core benchmark. And we got a benchmark of 159, which is actually pretty good. I was expecting it to be just behind that 4770K because it runs at 4.4 gigahertz, obviously. And this guy only boosts up to four gigahertz. We could probably get a little bit better speed results on the 3040 if it wasn't using DDR3L. If we were using DDR4 with a little bit faster frequency of RAM, like 2133 instead of 1600 megahertz, we would probably see a performance increase on both the multi-core and single core score. But uh, yeah, unfortunately the 3040 uses DDR3L memory at a lower frequency of 1600 megahertz. So that's probably the best we're going to get. I'm actually quite happy with those results. I was expecting a little bit less on both the multi-core and single core CPU scores. So I'm actually quite happy with those. So the next benchmark we're gonna move on to is going to be, yeah, we'll save those, those benchmark scores. It's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be 
Fire Strike in 3D Mart. And I'm going to open up MSI Afterburner while this is going. So uh, on MSI Afterburner, I have a core clock uh, increase for the, uh, the frequency of 210. The memory clock I increased by 380. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jack the fan up to 100% here because the, uh, the benchmark is going to get quite a roasty toasty for the 1080 Ti. It's going to get a little bit louder too. Hopefully you don't hear that on the microphone, but we're going to minimize um, MSI Afterburner. And then we're going to run Fire Strike here. And we're going to run Fire Strike a total of three times just to get kind of an average result or a best result. Hopefully I can get a, uh, a quite, you know, relatively similar results after the three runs for 3D Mark here. So let's go ahead and run Fire Strike and then I'll come back to you guys after it's done the three runs through Fire Strike. So I've done about five passes of Fire Strike now and believe it or not, my last benchmark that I just did was my best benchmark. And I actually had to drop the GPU memory and core clock frequency ever so slightly by two megahertz each to get it more stable. And it gave me a total score of 15,955. It gave a graphics score of 21,242 and a physics score of 11,655 and a combined score of 6,894. So that actually was a really good score. And my physics score jumped by 3,000. I don't know if that was because of uh, hyperthreading being disabled the last time I ran it. Uh, when hyperthreading was disabled, I had about like 8,600 and probably disabling the inspector and meltdown patches helped a lot there. Um, the highest graphics score I've gotten on this GPU was 21,840. But my, for some reason, my physics score was uh, lower than the 11,000. But my combined score was 6,894, which was pretty good. So that is the Fire Strike run completely. That was my best run with the Optiplex 3040. So why don't we get into a few games? I'm going to play Apex Legends, Fortnite. Um, I'm going to do The Witcher 3 again. And we'll try and fit in uh, the Tomb Raider as well, Rise of the Tomb Raider in the video as well. So I'm going to start with Apex Legends. So that was a good Fire Strike run. I'm very happy with that. Uh, so we're going to boot up Apex Legends and we're going to start benchmarking it using the built-in benchmarker of MSI Afterburner. First game up was Apex Legends and the very first thing that I got as soon as I started Apex Legends was Wraith asserting her dominance over me by T-posing. I'm guessing this is probably due to a too aggressive overclock on the 1070 Ti because my game promptly crashed after that. So I dropped the core clock to 200 and the memory clock to 370 in MSI Afterburner and that cleared everything up. And actually Apex Legends ran really, really well. I was very happy with Apex Legends performance. For the most part, it maxed out the FPS counter in the game, which was 144 FPS. The benchmarking program actually gave me a max FPS of 145.1. So it pretty much maxed the game out, the game engine out, so that was great. So my average FPS for Apex Legends was 137.9. The 1% low of Apex Legends was 95.2, and the 0.1% lows was 84.5. So Apex Legends ran really, really good. And if you look at the frame time on the benchmarking application in the left-hand corner there, you'll see that it was a very, very smooth experience while playing Apex Legends. And believe it or not, after I fixed the crashing problem, my team and I won. I potatoed out a little bit near the end with the Kraber, but uh, we, had, we did end up winning. Well, I got two kills, one guy got five, and the other guy got one. So we were a pretty balanced team. We actually managed to pull it off. This is actually my first time fully playing a game on the new map of Season 3. So it was actually pretty fun. So Apex Legends, pretty good on the Optiplex 3040. Moving on. After Apex Legends performed so well, I really, really wanted to know how the GTX 1070 Ti and the 6700 would work on Doom. So I tried Doom using the Vulcan API, and holy crap, this thing gets so much FPS that the coil wine coming from the 1070 Ti was ear shattering. I could not believe it. But running Doom on the Ultra preset gave me an average of 194.7 FPS, a minimum of 148.7 FPS, a maximum of 200.8 FPS, a 1% low of 138, and a 0.1% low of 106.1. So 
Doom ran extremely good, as it should. Doom is always, always well optimized. Anyways, next game will be Rise of the Tomb Raider. For Rise of the Tomb Raider, I ran it on the very high preset and but turn motion blur off. I also used SMAA on Rise of the Tomb Raider as well. And that gave me an average of 154.7, a minimum of 111, a max of 192.5, a 1% low of 105.2, and a 0.1% low of 41.3. So the GTX 1070 Ti definitely shattered Rise of the Tomb Raider as expected. It ran very well and I was pretty happy with the results. Next up was The Witcher 3. I ran this on the Ultra Graphics preset and for post-processing it was on the High preset, except I turned both blur options off because motion blur makes me sick. So that gave me an average of 83.8, a minimum of a 73.8, a max of 107.3, a 1% low of 71.1, a 0.1% low of 45.3. So it actually did really good on every much, everything pretty much maxed out on The Witcher 3, which is actually quite surprising. So I was very happy with the Witcher 3 and it ran really smooth actually for the, it being the Witcher 3. Next up and the final game they'll be using for benchmarking is Fortnite. Now I actually really don't like Fortnite so I didn't really put too much effort into benchmarking and I'm gonna be quite honest with you, but we were running Fortnite on the Ultra preset and that gave me an average of 122.1 FPS, a minimum of 73.9 FPS, a maximum of 175.9 FPS, a 1% low of 64.6, and a 0.1% low of 29.5. So I landed in the Lazy Lagoon because I heard this was a pretty good spot to land for benchmarking. I don't really know if that's true because I really don't care much for Fortnite. But yeah, it actually ran pretty good on Fortnite as well. So that is the last of the gaming benchmarks. So that is going to wrap up all the benchmarking on the Dell Optiplex 3040 for today. If you guys have any suggestions on how I can improve benchmarking, I would very much like to hear those suggestions. So please leave them in the comment section below. I'm rather new to benchmarking PCs. So I did my best with the knowledge that I have and the games that I own. So if there's anything that you think I can improve upon, again, please leave them in the comment section below. With that said, I'm actually very happy with how this guy back here actually performed. It actually performed really good. And it surprised me, especially in Doom with the massive amounts of coil wine and FPS that I was getting with that game with everything maxed out. That was ridiculous. But with that said, for the next video, we're going to do another video on the Dell Optiflex 3040, I think. I'm going to take your suggestions that you guys left in the previous video of me modding it, and we're going to improve upon the Dell Optiflex 3040 with your suggestions. So that should be a very fun video. So make sure you guys subscribe and hit the like button to see that video in the near future. And with that said, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Kendall Sloan as Wiltshire, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.